Have you ever stopped to think about why pencils are shaped the way they are? You know, that familiar hexagonal body with flat sides that nestles so neatly between your fingers. It's something most of us never question. We just pick up a pencil and start writing or sketching. But if you dig into the history a bit, you'll find that this design isn't just about aesthetics or manufacturing convenience. The shape of the pencil, especially the hexagonal one, is the result of centuries of evolution, practical considerations, and a few very human needs like grip, efficiency, and even theft prevention. Yes, theft prevention. More on that later. Let's explore, right here, on History of Simple Things. To really understand how we arrived at the modern hexagonal pencil, we have to go back a few centuries. The story begins in the 16th century in England, in a small town called Borrowdale in Cumbria. Around the 1560s, one of the world's first major sources of graphite was discovered here. The locals quickly realized that this dark, soft substance could leave marks on paper, wood, or just about any surface. They'd wrap sticks of graphite in string, or later in sheepskin, and use them for writing or marking livestock. These early tools were, in essence, the ancestors of today's pencils. The graphite wasn't mixed with clay as it is now. It was used in solid chunks, and it was extremely high quality. Because of this, Borrowdale graphite became prized across Europe. But raw graphite is brittle. It breaks easily. So eventually, people began encasing it in wood to give it strength and prevent their hands from getting stained. At first, this meant hollowing out a piece of wood, placing the graphite inside and sealing it up. These early pencil casings were often handmade, and the shape varied. Some were round, some were square, and others were just roughly carved to fit the graphite. Over time, as pencils became more commercially viable and widely used, manufacturers started to look at more uniform ways to produce them. This brings us to the 18th and 19th centuries, when the pencil industry began to flourish. In 1795, a Frenchman named Nicolas Jacques Conte developed a method of mixing powdered graphite with clay and firing it in a kiln, which allowed manufacturers to control the hardness of the graphite. This was a game changer. It made graphite more versatile and easier to produce in consistent quality, removing the dependency on the rare and expensive Borrowdale deposits. With the core formula standardized, manufacturers turned their attention to the casing. Early mass-produced pencils were often round. A round pencil might seem logical at first, easy to turn on a lathe, comfortable to hold, and symmetrical in design. But round pencils have a few practical problems. First, they roll. If you're working at a desk and set a round pencil down, it can easily roll away fall off the table, and break. This becomes especially annoying in classrooms or studios where dozens of people might be using pencils at the same time. The second issue is grip. A round pencil, especially as it wears down and becomes smooth, can be harder to hold firmly. You may find your fingers slipping or feel your hand cramping after extended use. Enter the hexagonal pencil. By simply shaving off six equal sides, manufacturers discovered that pencils were not only easier to grip, but also stayed in place when set down on a desk. The hexagon offers enough flat surface area for your fingers to rest naturally, and enough angularity to prevent rolling. It's a balance of geometry and ergonomics. But it wasn't just the user's comfort that drove this shift. It was also about manufacturing and economics. 
The hexagonal shape is easier to produce en masse because you can slice a wooden slat into multiple long, thin rectangles, glue the graphite cores between them, and then shape them into hexagons using a grooved mold or cutting device. This process, known as pencil slatting, became the industry standard, and the hexagonal pencil became dominant by the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Interestingly, the shape also helped with branding. Flat surfaces made it easier to print brand names, slogans, or grades of hardness onto the pencil. Round pencils had to rely on labels or paint, which could wear off more easily. Hexagonal pencils provided a kind of billboard space for manufacturers to distinguish their products in an increasingly competitive market. Now, remember when I mentioned theft prevention earlier? There's a quirky side note to this story. In some cases, schools and businesses would order hexagonal pencils instead of round ones because they were easier to keep track of. Round pencils, particularly expensive ones used for drafting or art, were more likely to accidentally roll into someone's bag or fall to the floor unnoticed. The hexagonal shape not only kept pencils in place, but made them less likely to be scooped up unintentionally or intentionally. That said, not all pencils are hexagonal. You've probably used round pencils in art classes or mechanical drafting situations. These are often chosen for different reasons. Round pencils are easier to rotate as you draw, which helps maintain an even point and line width. For artists or engineers, that can be really useful. There are also triangular pencils now, especially for children, since the shape encourages the proper tripod grip for writing. So while hexagonal pencils dominate the general writing world, they aren't the only design in play. In the end, the hexagonal pencil is a beautiful example of how small, seemingly mundane objects are shaped, literally and figuratively, by layers of history, economics, design, and user experience. It's not just about six sides, it's about usability, manufacturing efficiency, and human-centered design. We often think of innovation as flashy new tech or groundbreaking science, but sometimes the smartest solutions are the ones that sit quietly on your desk, ready to be picked up and used without a second thought. So the next time you pick up a pencil, take a moment to appreciate those six humble sides. They represent centuries of trial, error, and everyday brilliance. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.